forward, flex your shoulder. You can see the humerus pop out posteriorly, then bring your shoulder down and it pops back into place. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and bring it back up again. It posteriorly subluxes and dislocates and then bring your arm down, pops back into place. So what's going on with that patient? Well, he has multi-directional instability. There's two major types of dislocations. There's the one that doesn't really require any trauma and you can see it in people who have very stretchy ligaments like that particular patient. And then there's traumatic dislocations where you have a fall or you're involved in an injury where your shoulder pops out and needs to be reduced and put back in. That's a traumatic dislocation. So I'm just gonna talk a little bit about atraumatic dislocations of the shoulder, which is called multi-directional instability, which means the shoulder can come out this way, it can come out the front, it can come out the back. We see it in patients who have a lot of ligamentous laxity. Their elbows hyperextend, mine does not, but their elbows will hyperextend. They can hyperextend their fingers they can bring their thumb down to their forearm. That's another sign of multi-ligamentous instability, which just means they're very stretchy. They're stretchy patients. You can see this in people with um, Allo-Danlos syndrome or EDS, patients who have Marfan syndrome. Those are two distinct diagnoses with patients who have a lot of stretchy ligaments. And that way they can pop their shoulder in, they can pop their shoulder out. We treat that instability with at least six months of physical therapy. If that doesn't bring the shoulder back into the joint where it becomes stable, they are a candidate for a capsular uh, shift, which means I take the capsule, which, very, which is very loose, and I tighten it, which will help to keep the shoulder in position. Most patients do very well with physical therapy. Worst case scenario, after six months of PT, then they end up with a capsular shift.